Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to the Book Refuge and welcome to another Taboo Romance Rex. Now this is one I actually have made before and it's actually one of my most popular videos which is why it shocks me that I haven't made one of these in over two and a half years I think. This was one of my very first Taboo Romance Rex that I ever made and it is a little outdated. I mean it's not outdated, the recommendations are still great but I had read so few captor captor romances back then but um yeah that video is one of my best performing videos it has over 20,000 views so I know there's lots of disturbing people like me out there who like reading captor captor romances and you know just like those situations that we get into so with all of my videos where I have taboo wrecks you know please check your individual triggers for these some of them will contain non-con or dub con some of them just the kidnapping part of it is the non-consensual and the sexy times will still be um, consensual but not for all of them so please make sure that with each of these books that you individually check that if that's gonna be an issue but again we are at the taboo romance wreck so expect it to be a little bit that I mean a little bit much I feel like I need lip gloss for this one let's do it need a little extra shine on now I'm ready okay let's go in because you know what what's absolutely shocking is that I haven't made a captor captive wreck video since I read Carnal Urges, which was my favorite book of 2021, and like it's so perfect for this one. Um, this one is absolutely delightful. This is book two in the Queens and Monster series by JT Geisinger. It is recommended that you start at the beginning with um, Ruthless Creatures. Also, book three in the series has kidnapping in it as well. But this one, we have Daddy Declan. He's not called Daddy Declan, but I call him Daddy, okay? He's perfect. Um, and he is asked to kidnap Sloan, who is friends with the girlfriend of a different head of the mafia. So they want to use her as leverage. And then once he gets her in his hands, his, like, capo, his leader, dies. And now he's the head of the Irish mafia. And uh, he doesn't quite know what to do with this woman he has now under his control. And in fact, it would be easy to just kick her loose, but now he just can't because him and all of his men have fallen under her spell. And it's fantastic, okay? Sloane is... There's a book with a character named Sloane. You know she's going to be good, okay? You know she's going to be good. So I highly recommend this. This one is extra spicy. It also is very emotional in some interesting ways, like... This is one where like Declan and Sloan, they fall head over heels for each other. And it does happen pretty quick. I understand that doesn't work for everyone. But the kinds of emotions that they pull up in each other and the way that they explain that, they completely win me over. It's why I love them so, so deeply. Then we have a historical that I just read recently, and this is called Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. Um, this is one where the kidnapping... Um, takes place right away in the beginning of this one and our heroine she has actually caused some problems to our hero's reputation her brother and his wife were lovers and they are both dead and she believes that he's the reason that they're both dead in fact that he probably killed them himself and since she has no other recourse but to ruin his reputation that is what she has done he has more people to think about than just himself he has people relying on him as it is when you're a duke i think he's a duke now i just i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure he's a duke and he has lost out on his marriage prospects with her ruining his reputation which granted like is what she was trying to do but because he has more people counting on him than just himself he needs something to happen and so he kidnaps her with the plan to force her into marrying him by ruining her reputation which would then ruin her brother's reputation who her brother's already in kind of a iffy place from his romance with his wife with his woman so he kidnaps her brings her to the small cabin there is bed sharing there is her being tied to the bed but there isn't any non-consensual stuff that happens between them this one isn't one like that but he does convince her that this coerced marriage is going to happen um, and through it, they, they both get to know each other and learn that 
the perceptions that they had of the other aren't exactly what they think. This one is available on KU and it is available with um, Audible Plus. So if you have an Audible subscription, you can download the audio for this book for free. I have discovered that a lot of Scarlett Scott's books are a part of that and I will be getting more of them very soon. All right, next we have Mafia Madman by Mila Finelli. Um, you could say that all the books in this series have kidnapping in them because the first two books in the series also kind of revolve like a coerced situation, but I wanted to do um, Enzo and Gia instead. And Gia is the sister of the heroine from the first book. And when our hero Enzo comes across her at Paris Fashion Week, I think that's where they're at, he is like, or no, in Milan, Milan Fashion Week, got it. He sees this opportunity as too good to pass up to get revenge on Fausto, who, if you read the first two books, Fausto has very much fucked Enzo over horribly. Um, some of it deserves, some of it not. And... He's like, well, if you're just going to let your sister-in-law run all over the place and not protect her, I'm going to snatch her up and, you know, do d dastardly deeds to her. But the thing is, Gia, she's not going to take that shit lying down. And he may strip her naked and lock her in the bulkhead of a ship. Well, not a bulkhead. Where are we? We're on his yacht. In a prison room and on his very fancy yacht. But Gia, she is not going to back down or give up. And the power dynamics between these two are excellent okay just excellent then we have an alien romance we have captive of the horde king by zoe draven this is book one in the horde kings of Drakkar series and this first one deals with um the humans on this planet um they have very strict rules for themselves they're not allowed to start fires they're not allowed to i think kill certain animals and basically they are eking out a living like it is not a good place for them to be and the heroine's brother he ends up breaking one of these rules and one of the horde king comes by and he could very easily kill her brother kill this like whole village for what her brother has done um, and instead of doing that he decides to take her captive and make her his queen <laughs> which is not exactly what she was expecting um, for the crimes that her brother committed but this starts off an absolutely wonderful series. It's just super bingeable. Um, these are all available on audio. And I, I really think this is a great inroad to Zoe Draven. Everything of hers that I've read I have loved, including her, like, current series that she's putting out, which is, like, alien vampire berserkers. Like, she, she writes it good. She writes it good. All right, then we have Captured by a Sinner by Michelle Hurd. This one is book five in the Sinner series. Now, you could read this one as a standalone because she does kind of fill you in on any info you need to have, but this is another series where I didn't love the first book, but I really loved books two, three, four, and five. I enjoyed them all a lot. Um, she has quite the mafia world built together. I'm sorry that it's shiny. What can we do? There we go. We'll hold it that way. So this one is about, actually need to check, Victor and Rosalie. And we actually see her get kidnapped in an earlier book in the series. But like I said, she recovers everything that you need in this. So again, if you don't read the other ones, you would know where you're at with this. But we do see her get kidnapped in an earlier one when he takes out some members of her family that are awful. And then because she is underage, he takes her to his home to keep her safe in a way. Because he knows that if she were just set loose, she would get tracked down by her brother's other enemies and be killed. Because she would be seen as a rival and there would also be people who blame her for what her brother's done. So that would be happening. Um... And so he keeps her captive, but he also, like, he's not a cruel captor. This isn't one with non-con in it. And when feelings start to develop between the both of them, he wants her to make sure that she's not having any kind of, you know, Stockholm Syndrome for him um, and gets to experience her life before, like, choosing him and more happens with that. So love that series quite a bit. Then we, of course, have another, we have a few mafia ones in here because that's where this happens a lot. Um, this one is, let me make sure I grab the right one. Yes. So this is Hidden Truths by Neva Altaj. This is book three in her series. Um, the uh, perfectly, 
imperfect series and this one is about Sergei and Angelina and the way that this one starts Angelina is escaping from the cartel in Mexico her father was murdered and one of his rivals took over and he wants to force her to marry him so that he can keep all his power and her grandmother helps her smuggle out in a drug shipment um, and she had actually taken the place of a girl who was supposed to be a gift for the mafia she was being sent to. Um, the shipment ends up getting pulled over by the Bratva and Sergei, who is a killing machine, um, and he was like a super soldier and he will have these like blackouts where he might kill someone if they like touch him. So he has some PTSD, he has some issues based on what like the military did to him as well as his like PTSD and everything. But when um, him and his, uh, you know, fellow brought a member break into the shipment and they find this girl, he sees her and she's like, she's mine. I'm going to take care of her and I'm going to protect her. Um, Neva Altaj writes these very amazing heroes who usually is, it's always the heroes falling first. It's always them being very possessive, but never like forcing themselves on them. So he does kidnap her, bring her to his home, not going to let her leave until she tells him who she really is and how he can help her, which she's afraid to do because she doesn't think she can trust him. And he keeps her locked in his home with his dog. <laughs> and she actually is like helping with his PTSD in certain ways too. It's very beautiful. So really, really love this story. Then we have Call the Coroner by Avril Aston. And this one is actually an MM, extremely dark. This one also ha is Cartel. Um, and this one has um, Daniel who... He had his wife murdered by an assassin, and he has finally figured out who this assassin is. This assassin's name is Stavros, and Daniel has been stalking Stavros. He knows that he is, I believe that he's gay or bisexual. I think he's gay. Um, but either way, he has been stalking him while trying to capture him once he finds out who this is who killed his wife. And he would never admit it, but he's kind of fallen for him a little bit because the thing is, Stavros did kill his wife and tried to kill him. Um, Daniel actually bears the scars of their previous encounter, which included almost a garroting, um, which he was able to survive. Um, but Stavros takes hits like that's what he does. And it's one of those things where it's like being a hitman. Everybody wants to use you, but nobody has respect for you because you'll take money to kill anyone. But also, like, he didn't have a vendetta against Daniel. And really what the question should be, and if Daniel can open his eyes to that and see, really the question should be who hired Stavros to kill him and his wife. Because that's really the people that he should be going after. So this one, again, this is very dark. This involves torture and, um you know, one hero doing horrible things to the other hero because Daniel is trying to torture information out of Stavros. And at some point, um, Stavros starts to become a bit aroused by the things that Daniel is doing to him and Daniel becomes aroused back. And um, it goes places that neither of them expected that it will. But I read this book last year and it just, it really shook me up a little bit. It was really unique and it was one of the darker things that I've read, that I've read recently at the time. And wow, was it, it was a powerful story for sure, for sure. All right, then we have another mafia here. We have um, Deviant Hacker by Maggie Cole. This one is book nine in her um, Mafia Wars series. And this is another one, like, I tell people there are certain books in the series that are read where you could read them as a standalone. Um, some of my favorites in the series are Savage Tracker and Ruthless Stranger and um, unchosen ruler. And of course you will get the most out of the series if you read it in order, or at least if you start with the O'Malley family, which starts with unchosen ruler. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to say like, yes, you could just read this one if you want. This one has some daddy kink in it, but it starts with a kidnapping. So our heroine in this one, her name is, sorry, I have to check. It's been a little bit, Simona. She um, is a hacker and she has been hired to do these little tasks and she'll get paid to do them. Well, it turns out these tasks she's been doing have been picking apart part of the O'Malley family, like security and finding their secrets. Now, she doesn't know that's what she's doing, but when Declan is able to 
finally discover who the person is who's doing this hacking, he is extremely dismayed to find out that it is actually a woman that he wanted to take home one night and have his dirty way with her. So he now thinks that she was a plant and that she was there to deceive him when really it was all just a horrible coincidence. And so he kidnaps her, brings her to his safe house, ties her to a bed, and basically like refuses to let her do anything that he doesn't let her do. And again, some daddy king comes into play, but then the grovel has to set in because it becomes clear that she had no idea what she was doing. Um, she maybe should have asked more questions about that, but she's a desperate college student who was just doing, using her skills to survive. And he has sexually tortured her. Well, not sexual tor wasn't the part, but he, he has mentally fucked with her head and fucked her body. And now he's like, I actually want her to love me. And I've like destroyed her. What do I do? Yeah, it's not like as dark as I just made it sound. I realized it just made it sound super dark, but I mean, it is a captor captive romance and this is taboo rights. So there we go. Then of course, we would be remiss if we didn't include the queen of Twisted and Taboo herself, Sam Mariano. And I'm gonna do a throwback for this one. This is one of her standalones. This one doesn't come up a lot. This is actually also currently her only book that has an audiobook. Um, there will be some of the coastal elites that have one, but currently, her only book with one is The Imperfectionist. And this one is, it's twisted. Um, our hero, he has been a hitman at times in his life and his brother-in-law has been a little fucker and he has cheated on his sister. And because the hero doesn't wanna do his sister and his, uh, I can't remember if it's nieces or nephews, but whatever, there's kids involved, any damage, he agrees to take out the woman that his brother-in-law has had an affair with, right? So we are very morally gray here, right? And it turns out she is a barely legal, I don't even know if she is, she's 17 or 18 years old, and she's gotten pregnant and she refuses to get rid of the baby because she's like, I'm not gonna get rid of my baby just because it's inconvenient for you. Um, and so when the hero goes to kill her, she offers herself, she's like, you can do whatever you want to me, just let me live, let my baby live. And so, he does because this is San Mariano and he fucks her. And then he's like, you know what? I'm going to take you home with me and make you mine. And I'm going to fuck you until I decide to kill you. And she's like, okay, I'll come with you. Please don't hurt my family. And I'll do whatever you want if you don't. So this is what we're dealing with. But again, because it's San Mariano, he very quickly is like, well, why am I going to get rid of this person who I'm liking a lot and who's willing to let me do whatever I want with her? And, you know, like, why am I punishing her for my brother-in-law, who's a twisted fuck, who he's the one who cheated on my sister and was wanting her to get rid of her baby, wanted me to kill this girl, you know, so... Things go in a, in a certain way because it's San Mariano. But I wanted to bring this one up because it doesn't get brought up a lot and it's just as twisted and crazy as some of our other books, right? Okay, and then I wanted to round this one out with actually a fan fiction. Now, a fan fiction that gets brought up a lot, of course, would be Manacle. That one has Captor Captive in it as well and I would recommend that one. But if you don't want to bite off a thousand page fan fiction to start, okay? Okay, how about we start with something a little more reasonable, but also involves some of the same kind of tropes. And that is Imprisoned by Stein048. Yes, this is one of my beautiful bound copies. You, I will have a link where you can get this. You can get this, not this book, sorry. No, not this book. This, this was hand bound for me by my friend. Also look at the beautiful under cage here. Um, but where you can get it on AO3 because this is free for download, free for reading on there. Um, and this one is with the hypothesis, what happened if Hermione never escaped the manor with everyone else the night of the showdown at Malfoy Manor? Instead, she was thrown into the dungeons and her friends had left her. Her only company is her own thoughts and Draco Malfoy, who convinced the Dark Lord to spare her, but at what cost? And so the part of this, obviously it's kept her captive. She's being kept in their dungeons and Draco isn't quite a double agent in this yet, but he also doesn't want to torture and kill this person he went to school with. Like he doesn't want to see that happen to her. And so 
he has to have a reason for wanting to do that in the Dark Lord's world. And that would be, oh, well, I want her for myself. So we got that going on. But yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. Thank you to Mel, as always, for providing me with these absolutely beautiful bound fix. Um, but you guys, like I said, I'll have a link to this on AO3. This one's a, in in her um, bound ones. This one is about um, 450 pages, but it's fantastic. There's some great Dramini captor captive scenarios that happen. Obviously, like the auction is that as well. Um, but I want to include fan fiction recs in my recs because they're amazing and they're free entertainment for us. You don't have to buy, you don't have to support Amazon. You can just go and read them for free, right? So there we go. I'm so glad that I was able to make another captor captive rec. Obviously, I left some of these out that a lot of people would talk about, right? I didn't put any Sophie Lark in there. I didn't put in um, any some of the other ones because I feel like those show up in a lot of people's videos. I wanted to try to pick some that aren't in everyone's. But thank you so much for watching this. If you love this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment your favorite captor captives. You can check out the older video. It's cringe for me. It's hard for me to watch because it was over two years ago and looking at myself back then is difficult. But there's still great solid recs there. So if you want to check that out too, that'd be great. If you want to support me here on the channel, I do do this full time. I have a Patreon. Um, you could send a super thanks if you wanted to do that. But any little bit that you can send is fantastic and it helps me keep doing what I'm doing here. Thank you so much for watching friends and I'll see you next time. Bye.